Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to save live output to disk or bounce in Reaper. I have a project in front of me here with some music and some voiceover. And I want to bounce this down to a stereo file. Normally, we go up here to the file menu and we choose render. We'd set it up to be stereo, choose the file type, and so on. But if we want to move our faders and create a rough mix or do any moves on the fly, we can't do that while we render it. We have to use a different method. And luckily, there is. And it's called save live output to disk or bounce. So instead, we'll go to the file menu and choose save live output to disk or bounce, which we could also trigger with a keyboard shortcut right here. And that's going to open up this dialog instead, which is kind of similar. We could decide where we want to put the file by browsing. I already created a folder right here for live output to disk. So it's going to save the file in that folder. Then we can name the file right here. We could give it a custom name, or we could use the wildcards. So if we choose project, it's going to base the name of the file based on the project name. And we could add a whole bunch of them for tempo, time signature, output format, sample rate, bit depth, and even the current date, time, and computer information. But for this, I'm just going to use the project name. So it's going to render it right here. Then we can choose the output format, wave, MP3, or whatever we want. I'm going to choose stereo. We could do mono or multi channel. We could choose the bit depth right here. I'm going to choose 16 bit. And we could also include markers and regions, just markers or just regions if we want. But I don't have any, so I'm going to leave this off. And we could also embed project tempo if we want. But once again, I don't need it for this file. Now before we go through the options down here, let's first bounce our first file, or save live output to disk. So if we hit start now, we can see down here it's already bouncing our file. And counting down, so let's create the rough mix I want to bounce with the music and the voiceover. So folks say to me, hey, I can record at home. I can produce my own voiceover demo. Well, maybe you can carve a turkey. But do you really want to do your own brain surgery? And then we faded it out at the end. But as you can tell, the file is still bouncing. So if we want to stop it, we'll go back to the file menu and notice there's a check mark next to the option, letting us know we're still bouncing. And if we choose it again, the live output will be saved. So if we want to see it, we can go to our hard drive, which is the Explorer on PC or the Finder on Mac, and see the file. But let's first create a new project. This way we could bring it in to see it. And here's the file we just bounced. So let's drag it in. As you can see, there's a lot of blank space in the beginning, because it started bouncing right away. And here's the mix we made. So folks say to me, hey, I can record it and it faded out at the end. But it also ran quite long because we didn't stop it right away. So let's check out some other options that'll make this cleaner. So let's go back to that dialog, but this time we'll use the keyboard shortcut, which on the PC is Alt 
Control and B. And on the Mac is Option Command and B. So let's check out the other options down here. If we choose this, it's going to save output only while playing or recording. So let's bounce it again. Now by default, it's going to overwrite the first bounce because it has the same name. So let's choose the option over here, which is going to increment the file names, which is going to avoid overwriting. So let's bounce it now. And if we go down here, we we'll notice it's not recording to the file because the timer isn't moving. But if we hit play, it then will. So folks say to me, hey, I can record at home. I can produce my own voiceover demo. Well, maybe you can carve a turkey. But do you really want to do your own brain surgery? And now if we check it out, the timer is still moving. But if we hit stop, it stops moving. But if we hit play again, it starts moving again. So every time we hit play, it keeps adding to the bounced file. So now if we stop the bounce using the menu or the keyboard shortcut, it creates the file, which we can see right over here. Notice it added a number to the end. So it didn't overwrite the first file. Let's bring this in, and we can see it starts right at the beginning. So folks say to me, and then it fades out, but it also recorded when we played it again. Every time we hit play, it added to the file. So let's go back to our project, and let's open Save Live Output to Disk again. We also have the option to stop saving output on first stop. So if we just want to bounce it once, we use this option. So if we hit start, it's going to bounce when we hit play. So folks say to me, hey, I can record at home. I can produce my own voiceover demo. Well, maybe you can carve a turkey. But do you really want to do your own brain surgery? And now if we hit stop, it stops playing and it stops the bounce. So we don't have to manually stop it. And here's the file. If we bring it in, it started bouncing from the beginning. And when we hit stop, it stopped the transport and it stopped the bounce, creating a new file on stop. And we could also not save it when the sound is below a certain level. It defaults to 60 dB over two seconds. So if there's little to no sound being played, it's going to stop writing to the file. Let's turn this off for now so we can see how this works. Let's leave this off as well and then turn this option on. And then we'll create a bounce. And as we can see, it's bouncing but the timer isn't moving, so it's not writing to the file. The sound needs to be a certain level, and then it'll start actually bouncing. So folks say to me, hey, I can record at home. I can produce my own voiceover demo. Well, maybe you can carve a turkey, but do you really want to do your own brain surgery? And when the file gets below that threshold, it stops writing to the file, even though it's still playing. And even when I stop the transport, it's still ready to bounce some more if the sound crosses that threshold again. So folks say to me, hey, I can record at home. And then it stops writing to the file when the sound dips below 
the threshold. Then we can stop bouncing by choosing it in the menu or hitting the keyboard shortcut. And then it creates the live output file. And here it is. So those are the options for live output to disk or bouncing. Now there's one other thing I want to show you, and that's an action to make this even easier. If you already go through and set this up, and you probably want to turn on the option over here. If we go to the action menu, show action list, and type in live, we can see the actions that go with this. This is the one right here we've been using, but we could also use this one and assign it a keyboard shortcut or put it in the menu, or we could use it right from here. And what that's going to do is it's going to save live output to disk or bounce without opening up the dialog. It's just going to use the previous settings. So we could run it right from here, and we can notice down here it's already bouncing. And we're done, trigger it again, and it saves the live output. Just saving us that extra step. Just run it, and it starts bouncing right away. So that's pretty much it. That's how to save live output to disk or bounce in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!